This is the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam, a new podcast for engaged couples concerned about wedding planning and family expectations but want a stress-free, fun, and unforgettable wedding. Hi, I'm Sal from After Hours Events of New England. I'm Sam from Atmosphere Productions DJ Service. Welcome to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Do you have your heart set on a winter wedding? It's an unorthodox choice for sure. But how do you execute a winter wedding? Firstly, you'll need to plan ahead and have a plan B. If you've already booked your wedding venue for a winter wedding, what do you need to know? What suggestions can make your winter wedding look unique? After listening to this edition, you'll know and understand the answer to those questions and learn how to handle your wedding planning stress and put that knowledge to use right away. With over 80 years of combined wedding experience and insider information... This is Stress-Free Wedding Planning with your hosts, Sal and Sam, a new podcast for engaged couples who are stressed about wedding planning and family expectations, but want to have a fun wedding. Listen now for revealing wedding insider secrets, tips, and strategy or lesson that you'll be able to implement for a stress-free wedding, information that you just can't miss and may just change your life. Take the journey with us from worry and concern to a stress-free and unforgettable wedding day. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam. In today's edition, is there anything quite as magical as a winter wedding? From holiday music to wintry florals, seasonal wedding details can add warmth and charm to even the frostiest cold days. If you're planning a winter wedding and want to deck the halls of your wedding venue, For winter nuptials of your own, we have merry winter wedding ideas to inspire you and your guests. Now, these things should go without mention, but I'm going to mention them anyway. Firstly, plan ahead. Second, have a backup plan. And of course, thirdly, something very important for the winter time, provide outdoor heaters. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Thank you for joining us again on the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. I'm Sam from Atmosphere Productions. And I'm Sal from After Hours Events of New England. So let's get right to it. We're discussing winter wedding ideas. And uh, the first one is selecting a fitting venue. It's winter, Sal. Some of the things that people should definitely consider is, are you going to have a winter theme? Is it going to be green and red? Or are you just going to have a regular wedding and it just happens to be Christmas or whatever winter holiday that you're you're near? Yeah, absolutely. People are doing different things now. I've I've had, say, Halloween, for instance, and not have a Halloween wedding. And now you're going to have a winter <laughs> wedding. You're not really having a, a winter-themed wedding. So you need the facility to know, especially because they may decorate in a certain way, and they may have to make changes just for you. You've got to think of the space and uh, how are the guests are going to be uh, heated. Uh, some folks have thought of barns, which is perfect for a winter aesthetic, but although it's picturesque, Remember, you have to heat it. Oh, yes, because it's going to get really cold very (laughs) fast. Keep in mind, these places are not insulated. So uh, if you're not putting a number of heaters, you can't just put one or two. No. You have to put a number all the way around if you want it to stay warm enough to keep your guests there. If you're looking for an enchanting setting, then you might want to look for something that has a enchanting backdrop, something like a botanical garden. There's the uh, New York one, Botanical Gardens, and also in uh, Massachusetts, Boston, there's the Tower Hill Botanical Gardens. Search your local areas for similar locations if you're looking for something in that type of uh, setting. Next up is embracing the weather. It's winter. White stuff might happen. <laughs> <laughs> By tying the knot in a cold weather condition, uh, you know, you can take advantage of long sleeves for the, the dresses. Mm-hmm. And gentlemen, they can wear coats. So if you want to go something like that, embrace the, the, the weather. Uh, add a little festive accessories. Ladies, you know, you can have a, a sweater, for instance, or you can go with a nice long white coat. The, those are sort of things that really make a winter wedding uh, attractive. Yeah, please do not wear off the shoulder older dresses you're going to regret it oh, later and i've seen God. that happen like i'll be okay <laughs> and like yeah now you're all red and uh, the pictures are not exactly what you expected and as we were talking about accessories how about a gold uh, hair comb or seasonal hair wreath uh, ah. a patchwork of uh, sequined uh, capes or something that's going to accentuate the winter that's embracing it you know try and 
have something that if you're planning for your ceremony to be outdoor, embrace that. Have everybody have blankets, for instance. Absolutely. Things, uh, things that make a difference. Yeah. Go they? back to the hair piece. You oh, like. yeah. I love that because, you know, the photographer is oh, going to yeah. get some great shots with stuff like that. These are things you're going to remember. These are the things that are going to be unique to your wedding compared to others. Also, consider a non-traditional look for the groomsmen since we're talking about uh, having your ceremony outside, which obviously, l- let's just state as a fact, it's not preferable to have a ceremony outside in the winter. But if you can do it embrace the uh, the weather so anyway i was saying about the groomsmen pick out suits that fit the groom's personality is just as important as finding flattering fits these days so steer away from those uh, black tuxes <laughs> because that's what you would do at any other time of the year and experiment with different fabrics and colors and patterns considering pairing a tweed jacket with a velvet pants set and uh, mismatch stuff like a paisley print all these things will kind of pop in the in the photos. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you want to kind of keep with the winter theme. So mm-hmm. colors are very important. You don't want to be using oranges and browns, which would be more like fall. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go definitely more wintry. The idea of being non-traditional is doing something different, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> non-traditional. So talking about an indoor or outdoor, how about stringing those glistening twinkle lights around the area for your nuptials? That can add that, that wintry look. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. So, you know, lights make such a great enhancement. It doesn't just have to be in the ceremony. It could be where you're having the cocktail hour or say you are having it in a barn, having it done throughout the barn. Yes. It could be such a great look, so picturesque, wonderful for pictures. And in the trees, too. I've oh, yes. seen that in the winter. You hang them in the trees. You know, you want to keep the magic alive and another way of doing that is uh, with garlands of green and you can string them in between the lights and you can add to that effect in fact adding garlands and candles to your tables will make a great uh, tablescape as well i've seen that done and some of this stuff is cheaper than you normally do for regular wedding flowers and stuff like that and lighting yeah really i mean i'm glad you mentioned flowers because that's the next thing you can use dried flowers you don't have to use real flowers for some of these tablescapes that's a great look too a great look dried flowers are coming back i know my wife used dried flowers when her bridesmaids had them and this was 30 years ago but that stuff is coming back dried flowers are often used in place settings uh the ceremony arches and some of those hanging installations they also make great boutonnieres for the guys as well that is beautiful that is beautiful (laughs) keep the theme going and of course one of the most important things that I think for a winter wedding is hot chocolate. Ah, yes. <laughs> and a nice cold day, a little hot chocolate, put a little marshmallows inside oh, there. Oh, yes. Thinking outside the box with hot chocolate is exceptional because you can have a uh, hot chocolate station and you can stock it with marshmallows, as uh, Sal mentioned, and peppermint sticks. How about some whipped cream? I, I was about to say flavoring. <laughs> Got to put some flavoring there. You, there's so many things you could do with hot chocolate flavor-wise. You can also have a signature frozen hot chocolate drink. You know, have a little alcohol mix with that. <laughs> a little cold with the cold. Why not? You'll feel warm afterward. Don't worry about it. You will. We've got some more great winter wedding ideas right after these messages. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Wedding Tip Wednesday is brought to you by Emerge Cosmetics. Are you ready to emerge? A new line of luxurious lipsticks and lip glosses created with the intention of empowerment and coming into who you truly are. Strong, beautiful, and confident. Use coupon code EBI10 at shopemergecosmetics.com for an instant 10% discount. That's coupon code EBI10 for 10% discount at shopemergecosmetics.com. Emerge as the true you. On this Wedding Tip Wednesday, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. You see those ornaments on your Christmas tree? They can be used for your guest book. Buy a bunch of ornaments after the holidays. Have your guests sign Christmas ornaments at your wedding reception every year. You'll hang them up on your tree and have a remembrance of all the guests that attended your wedding. And to buy them after the holidays is the key thing because obviously they're much cheaper. And buy colored ones. Try and go for the whites or the grays or the light colors so that your Sharpie pen can write in black ink on the ornament so they can be seen clearer. And you can put some clear coats on those ornaments so that the lettering or the wording is not going to get smudged throughout the, the year. It is a great remembrance of your wedding because every year, as you said, you're able to put those up on the Christmas tree. And it's like remembering your wedding day all over again. Then what you could do, too, is add an ornament every year with your next anniversary. 
Oh. So another little keepsake. That, thing, that thing's going to get heavy after a while, but hey, <laughs> why not? Wedding Tip Wednesday is available on the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group page every Wednesday. Join the group for free. You're not the same as the person next to you. You dress to reflect your personality. You enjoy customizing your drink at the coffee shop. Even your pet's collars match at least two pairs of your pants. It's only natural that your wedding would showcase your unique touch. After Hours Events of New England gets this. They like to give their clients full artistic control. If you find yourself lost, their team of event specialists can help. They handle everything from DJs, photo booths, event lighting, photography, videography, even efficiency. Give them a visit on the web and call today. Let's get planning. After Hours Events of New England. After Hours Events of NE.com. Don't forget to like and follow on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and be sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel all at After Hours Events of NE. That's After Hours Events of NE. Don't know what to do for your first dance? Is your future spouse having trouble picking a song to dance with their parent? Worry no more. I have the answer. Go to after hours events of NE.com forward slash contact guest. That is C O N T A C T G U E S T. And you'll be able to listen to hours of music to help you select the right songs for your upcoming wedding. Again, go to after hours events of NE.com forward slash contact guest. Do you want access to a stress free wedding planning process? Then go to our website, all the W's.atmosphere hyphen productions.com and get my free report. Eight questions you must ask a wedding professional before booking them. Get it today. That's all the W's.atmosphere-productions.com. Look for the free report and learn to shop like a pro from a pro and go from concern and worry to stress-free wedding planning. When your wedding entertainment has to have amazing music, be fun, organized, and professional, your choice has to be Atmosphere Productions. DJs, live musicians, custom lighting, and photo booths, as seen on the TLC TV series Four Weddings, winner of the Wedding Wire Couples Choice Award and DJ Times DJ of the Month. Experience the difference. www.atmosphere-productions.com That's www www.atmosphere-productions.com Happy holidays to you and yours. This holiday season, we'd like to thank everyone, especially our listeners who continue to support the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. You are the foundation of what we do each and every week. We'd also like to thank our sponsors for their continuing support. No matter how you celebrate this holiday season, we offer you love, peace, joy, and our best wishes. We want it to be filled with good health, happiness, and spectacular success. Listen in the new year, tell a friend, share our tips and suggestions, and join us in the stress-free wedding planning community because we'll have awesome new additions, features, and special guests. Check us out on social media by using our hashtag, hashtag stress-free wedding planning podcast. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Everyone is talking about the DJ Polly Show on YouShook.com. Hi, everyone. This is Keith Urban, and you're listening to the number one DJ on the planet, DJ Polly. What's going on, everybody? This is Charles. Hillary. And Dave. And we are Lady and Abella. And you're listening to the number one DJ on the internet. It's DJ Polly, y'all. Hey, y'all. I'm Kelsey Ballerini. And you're listening to the number one DJ on the internet. It's DJ Polly, y'all. The DJ Polly Show on YouShook.com. We dare to be different. Join us and see for yourselves. You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Welcome back to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. We are discussing winter wedding ideas with my friend here, Sal. <laughs> Hello, Sam. How are you doing? <laughs> Very good. Now, we've already discussed some great topics, setting the fitting venue, embracing the weather, consider a non-traditional look for your groomsmen, decorate with twinkle lights, experiment with dried flowers, and serve in hot chocolate. Those are the first six topics that we've talked about. We've got some more for you. For the ceremony, why don't you line the aisles with greenery? Try candlelit aisles with roses, hydrangeas, uh, garden roses, white cherry blossoms. Add pine cones that you can serve as a chic accent. I sound like I know what I'm doing, right? <laughs> are, are you? Are, is your future life a florist? <laughs> no, but I read up on this before I started talking about this. Let me give you a pro tip, though. Create a feeling of intimacy by um, having your ceremony in the round. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be outside. It can be inside, and it can be any year, any time of the year, but I figured I'd mention this. Being surrounded by your closest friends and loved ones, as you say I do, will make your moment even more special. 
and this. Halfway through the ceremony, feel free to switch sides to give your friends and family a different direction. Note, in the planning stages, make sure that your venue has enough room to accommodate this, and you let your photographer know that you're going to plan this. Oh, wow. Planning stage again. Plan, plan, plan. I do want to bring something up. Sam had mentioned about candles. So now, this is another thing that you need to go over with your venue. Some Some do not allow open flame. Yes. Maybe you should stay away from an open flame and do something battery operated yes. just to be safe there's loads of battery operated yeah. uh, candles oh definitely yeah. a little drinking and a little fire not always a good idea <laughs> yeah alcohol and fire doesn't really mix <laughs> together do now something that you're an expert on is up lighting and you don't just have to use green and red when you're doing holiday or christmas weddings right you know you don't you uh, can actually have a number of different colors going around the room you could uh, highlight a part of the room that you may want in red and another one in green and another one in blue or every other light could be a different color uh, and it'd be the Christmassy if that's what you're looking for just a winter wonderland yeah and amber or rust uh, amber is, is great perfect yes perfect at that, that time yep, of the year yep. sometimes uh, depending on what you're doing for decoration a nice a white or a soft white as we, yep. we call it yep. to yep. really kind of make things really pop and look great up lighting is very important we have a whole edition that discusses this previously so go back and check that But the point I'm trying to make is you don't have to have 17 or 20 fixtures. You can just have three or four in a certain area to accent that winter feel. A little lighting could go a long way and make such a difference to a room. So something to really strongly consider. And that is the darker part of the year. So even you know in the afternoon, it gets darker. Yeah. That could look great. Oh, you got it there, Sal. So that's up lighting. Uh, something that I've seen a couple of times this year, uh, not necessarily at winter, but it is a great idea for a winter wedding, is have a champagne tower. Now, a winter wedding with a champagne tower is magical. Now, perhaps you're hosting a New Year's Eve wedding or even a black tie Gatsby or a Halloween type function. This grandiose display of champagne glasses is guaranteed to be the wow of the wedding. You're probably asking, what's a champagne tower? Well, that's where the facility creates champagne glasses that create a pyramid. And you can go up eight or nine stories with the glasses and there's one on top and the idea is is that the couple when they come in they pop the champagne and they pour the champagne in the top glass it overflows into the second third fourth fifth to however many stories you have and you fill the glasses and the trick is is taking then those glasses and then handing them out which is what i suggest is that the couple hand out the glasses themselves. You don't have the wait staff. The idea is doing the champagne tower is that you are doing this for your guests, not somebody else doing it. But there are some pro tips. One thing I do want to mention is, you know, you mentioned how you, you pour on the top one and just let it drizzle to the other. Yep. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. If you don't feel comfortable with that or you just want, you think that's too time consuming, you can have them pre born and, and have them ready and, and to go. Now, Something I mention a lot is uh, having an adult-only reception, and this is something you should definitely do if you're going to have a champagne tower. And not only because some child could come and just knock it over, but... A child might steal a glass and someone may not notice it and start drinking it. And you don't want that problem. You don't want a child getting sick. Great idea, Sal. Now, a couple of uh, pro tips here. Make sure that you have the bottle corks of the champagne pre-corked so that you don't have to struggle trying to uncork the bottles of champagne. And the second thing to do is to have some sort of container underneath the last set of glasses so that when you pour the champagne, when it gets down to the last story, it doesn't just flow onto the tablecloth and on the floor and then everybody slips and falls and sues you. You, you, you don't want to do that. Have something ready for the overflow. Very important. And it but, can be decorative too. So, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Just, people don't have to know that it's a bucket or a, right, a container. Right, right, right. You, you could cover that up with something. But a champagne tower, great idea. I love it. I love it when uh, my clients do that. Next up is uh, set me up a DIY s'more station at your winter wedding. Again, a great idea. If you're having some of your wedding reception outside, you can have a fire pit and you can roast marshmallows and 
have skewers and all that. You know, make it something festive so that if people want to be inside, they can be dancing. If they want to be outside, they can... What's this song? Uh, Chestnuts roasting on an open open fire. fire. You can do that (laughs) with them. So if you want to do it inside, you can have the bar stocked with graham crackers, chocolate, marshmallows, and custom uh, filling. Plus, don't forget... Hot chocolate everywhere. We love hot chocolate, as I mentioned uh, before. Totally agree with you there, Sam. And for some of those fillings, again, it doesn't have to be milk chocolate. It could be dark chocolate. True. Some people have the favorite of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Oh, didn't think of that, but Make it right. a little different. <laughs> Set up that uh, DIY s'more station. It is a, a great idea. Providing blankets for your guests is the next idea that we'd like to share with you. Fluffy blankets can be provided for your guests as a favor. So even if your ceremony is inside, you can give them this favor as they enter, and they can still use them even if it's inside. If it's outside, obviously, it's a great idea. Again, If you're in New England and you're getting married December 24th and it's snowing outside, obviously, you know, some of these ideas, especially this one, is not going to be a very good idea. But having those blankets, it really is a touching favor that you're going to give your guests. And it's so easy to find nowadays from uh, finding one that's kind of wintry or even a little more customized with your names on it. Yeah, yeah. You can snuggle up with your your bestie and you can take (laughs) the blanket home afterwards. And remember where you got it from. (laughs) So have your bridesmaids uh, do something different as well instead of carrying flowers. Uh, Another idea is to have them carry greenery wreaths. So you'd have the circle wreath and it's decorated and that's what they walk in with if you really want to do something unique and different have the bridesmaids dresses in different colors or have them in red or all green that you're gonna embrace the winter feel and with the wreath you're really gonna add that uh, winter look well that's something we should probably have an addition about different dresses for you know every uh every bridesmaid yes, that, we, that's a great we, look you should have your <laughs> your vanessa come back and discuss we should that talk way. about that yes <laughs> unless unless of course you know more about dresses than <laughs> vanessa i don't think so i don't think so <laughs> and we're gonna wrap up everything with our final tip is choose a seasonal wedding cake and you can have, I've seen so many, go to Pinterest, go to Etsy. You can find some of the most fantastic winter wedding cakes with all sorts of different flavors in. I particularly like eggnog and gingerbread flavor. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. those are my favorite. Yeah. Some like cinnamon and things of that nature. Chai or uh, chocolate and peppermint. Ah, chocolate and peppermint. <laughs> <laughs> Pumpkin spice is my favorite coffee. I'm not sure whether they have that in a, in, in a cake, but I'm sure you can you can probably do well, that. Well, they have it in donuts. Why not cake? Yeah, really. There is no shortage of flavors for a uh, winter wedding cake. So if you want something seasonal and you want a, a wedding cake that's going to be different, then try those different flavors. So we've gone through some great ideas for you for your winter weddings. Uh, in this section, we covered the aisles uh, for the ceremony where you can add greenery. Sal discussed your uplighting. I told you about the uh, champagne towers, the s'mores deal. DIY, providing those blankets as well, seasonal wedding cakes, and the bridesmaids carrying uh, greenery wreaths. These are all some great ideas that we put together for you for your winter wedding. Winter brings some great options to be different. Why not do it? Why not do it? And why not be unique? You're listening to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Remember those questions I asked earlier? Do you have your heart set on a winter wedding? If you've already booked your venue for a winter wedding, what do you need to know? What suggestions can make your wedding unique? We answered those questions and you learned how to select a fitting venue, embrace the weather, and most importantly, serve hot chocolate. We explained how to use twinkle lights, dried flowers, and use uplighting. You can now put that knowledge to use today. Now, as you spend the next week planning your wedding, our community of stress-free, engaged couples and wedding experts are here to answer any wedding-related questions. Join us in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group. Once you're in, go ahead and share your concerns and worries, and we'll let you know if you're on the right track or if there's something that you need to work on. The link to join us is in the show notes of this edition, or go to Facebook and search for the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Community. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast is produced and copyrighted by Atmosphere Productions in association with After Hours Events of New England.